In this video, I'm going to show you our lighting gear setups for our typical portrait sessions. For typical portrait sessions, we take quite a bit of lighting gear to be able to pull off our style of imagery regardless of the situation we might be in. Now we classify this kind of portable style of lighting as guerrilla lighting, and this really means that we're looking to create big effects out of small and portable lighting gear. We don't necessarily use all the lighting gear that we take on each shoot, we just want to simply be prepared for any situation that we might encounter. So let's start this off and show you our current setup starting with our natural light modifiers. Now for natural light modification, we use two of these Westcott 5-in-1 reflectors. And I actually have them folded up together, but you'll see that one is set to the silver side and one is on the scrim side. So rather than having basically just one 5-in-1 reflector that we're going to sheath and unsheath during the shoot to be able to access the scrim and other sides, we basically take two reflectors. That way one set to the scrim, one is set to the silver side, which we're using the most often, and we can kind of be ready to go rather than trying to zip and unzip these uh, items because it is kind of difficult and time consuming. Okay, so that's it for natural light modification. Let's now talk about creating light or basically our strobes. I'm gonna go over here to our one bag. This is actually a 13 inch one bag and I don't know if I've talked to you guys about this yet, but we've been designing bags for photographers that we use basically ourselves. That's the undefined lineup of products. They can be purchased from undefined.com, but we're now starting to actually list them in the SR Lamp store as well. So this is the 13 inch one bag uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later on. If you guys wanna learn more, you can always check out the video that goes through all the design details. Let me just unzip this and let's go from the top basically. So to control our off-camera lighting, we have two additional pocket wizards. Generally, I do like to keep these in a little sheath just because I like to keep all my gear nice and protected. I'm gonna place this right here for now. Now the third pocket wizard is already on my camera. I have that mounted so I'm basically ready to go at any point in time and I just leave it on there because during a typical portrait session, we're not ever really using on-camera flash. We're always using off-camera flash because we can set up these scenes and our lighting to the way that we like. When it comes to weddings, that's another case and we will use on-camera flash in those situations because you're shooting journalistically and you don't have any option. So this is what I have mounted to my camera going out in the shoot. We have two additional ones so that we can create basically or control our lighting, have two additional light setup. All right, these are the Pocket Wizard Plus 3s by the way. Now for my strobes, I have Nikon SB80s. Some of you might know that I personally am shooting with the uh, Vivitar 285HVs. Again, it's not something that I'd recommend because they're large, they're bulky, and really the reissue hasn't been as good. All the other uh, photographers in our studio shoot with SB80s. Now these are a little bit more pricey. They're gonna be around 100 to 150 bucks used, but they're great off-camera flashes. They work incredibly well. So uh, this is what I'd probably recommend, at least until we figure out a better solution for something new. It'd be great if we could find a new manual flash that's under 100 bucks that has a PC sync port that works perfectly and reliably and has lots of power settings but as of right now that's kind of too much to ask for so we have these guys all right so let's go over our modifiers now for our flash setup so we have our two flash uh, strobes that we have here and we also have actually let me go over this too in this little Manfrotto bag this bag is the MBAG 790 lighting bag I don't know why they don't call it just like a lighting stand bag or something but basically we place all of our lighting stands inside of this bag um, I think you can buy a larger one too where you can actually fit say uh, a tripod as well at once I don't typically like to put my tripod in here because they kind of bang around but these are the light stands that we use. These are the Manfrotto, I forget the number, I don't wonder if it's on here. Yeah, the B001, or the 5001B. These actually have a later version that's out and we just have these uh, little flash mounts uh, attached to the top of them. So here's the other one. This one does not have a mount actually on it right now because I think I recently broke it. So these are what we place our flashes on, okay? And then we typically will just use this, uh, this little clip. I forgot, oh, this is a Hildebrand. Hildebrand? Hildebrand. We'll link all these items in the actual article, so if I get any names wrong in the video, please forgive me, but these do have this little strap right here that you can strap right around the, uh, the flash stand itself. All right, and then uh, let's go ahead and pull out the other item. So, talking about flash modifiers, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this just on the ground for now. So for flash modification, our typical most used item is a simple umbrella. Why? Because it breaks down very easily. Well, we don't need to, I mean, it's just small. It's small, it's portable, it gives us good light. You do need to make sure to use it correctly because if you use incorrectly, it can create kind of harsh light. So when you use it, attach to the stand and give a lot of distance between the flash and the umbrella. That way you can use the whole umbrella and not just a, a small piece of it. Okay, so that's our first and probably most commonly used lighting modifier for our flashes. Now we'll also use the actual reflectors for flash modification as well. For example, if we just need to soften that flash a little bit, we can use a silver or a white side uh, of the, uh, 
uh, of the reflector to basically flash through or use it as a bounce to just kind of increase the size of the light source and make it a little bit softer. That's in case we don't want to use the umbrella or we just don't have it on us. It works totally well, but it doesn't control the light as much as say umbrella would that's pointing directly at the subject. You're going to get a lot of light spill and fall off. So you're losing a lot of light with that kind of reflector methodology, but it does work if you're in a pinch. Our other items for flash modification includes gels. We actually love to gel. So you'll notice that the top of all of our flashes actually has a bit of Velcro. Up until now, this is what we've been using. And it's a very not so elegant solution when it comes to gelling. So we use two types of gels. One is a CTO. This is just a, a common color temperature orange CTO gel that's gonna basically help us to color balance when we're shooting in tungsten light. Uh, we have two of these, one for each flash. So I'm gonna set these right here. You can see that they make a lot of noise when moving them around. And they're also very easy to lose because they're just little pieces of like gel paper. All right, they also use these uh, ND gels. Now I use these more often than the other photographers, mainly because the Vivitar 285HV cannot go below 1 16th power. So when I need to drop it down, I can actually put these gels onto it to cut down the light to say 1 32nd or 1 64th power. Whereas something like an SB80 is gonna have that basically built in. So you really don't need that functionality. Okay, so those are the gels that we're using. Now, for a more elegant solution, because we also use snoots and so forth, and it takes up a lot of space. And that is, until we actually just got this, we got this unit for review. This is the MagMod, and as of recording this video, it's still on Kickstarter. So if we get this up in time, you guys can check it out on Kickstarter, get a little discount on it, but it's a really great and handy dandy little item. This is the base for the MagMod, and basically what you do is you just apply it or attach it to your, uh, your flash like so. It's made of this lovely, strong silicone, uh, rubber right here and then it has mag magnets on both sides of this little grip. So basically once attached and it's designed to basically fit over most modern flashes. Once attached to your camera or to your flash you can just apply these additional filters or these additional lighting modif uh, modifiers. I think I almost said modificator. That should be my new word for lighting modifiers. These are lighting modificators. All right so uh, what we have here is the gel. So this is a gel you can see that it has these magnets on this side and what you do is just simply bring it close. It's flipped around the other side right now and just apply it right to the top of the, the magnet. They're very strong magnets and they hold incredibly well. So it's not like you can shake them off or anything like that. They're not gonna fall. We also have a gel modifier. So again, this is held up by magnets. You wanna apply it, you just put it on and it applies right to the, uh, the modifier like so. Okay, so at any point in time, you can remove them. It's a much more elegant solution. It doesn't make noise. They're not easy to lose and it just works incredibly well. And that's why we highly recommend this option for those that like to snoot and gel their flashes. We also have the option to uh, bring this little uh, gel out. So you can actually get the gel kit and it'll come with several different types of gel. You just pop it in and you're ready to go basically. So it's a great solution that's gonna be quite a bit more reliable and a much more elegant solution than these basic uh, little flash gels over here. All right, so that's it for our flash modification. I think I covered everything for flash modification. All right, let's talk about constant light modification. Now for constant lights, up until this point, we've been using two different options. So we have one option, which is these Brinkman's. And what we do is basically pop in a little gel diffuser uh, just on the inside. And so what that's doing is basically softening up the light, but they're really awesome constant lights. They're incredibly cheap. The problem is that they just discontinue these. So these are made by Brinkman's. They're actually camping lights and lights that are used for like say painting cars, they'll see like the scratches and stuff in the paint and so forth. They discontinue them and they're remaking them with LEDs, which are gonna be tungsten, uh, not tungsten, they're gonna be actually daylight balanced. So they're gonna be blue and that's gonna make them quite a bit less useful. So you can use just standard fl uh, flashlights basically if you don't have a lot of money. These are like 30, 40 bucks. You can get decent flashlights, put a little modifier in them to kind of soften and spread out the light a little bit better. And that's a great option. Now for us, we are to the point now where it makes sense to use the GL1. This is the little GL1. It's the best constant light that you can get on the market right now. It has telescoping controls, so basically you can zoom in the light. We've done a review on it. If you want more information, you can check this out. The only downside to this light is really just the price. It does cost quite a bit. So I think one of these is around $600 as opposed to these that are around like 30, 40 bucks, but the quality of light and what you get is really unmatched. You have more control much more power, much better quality of light with this uh, this constant light over something like a, a Brinkman, which isn't designed for photography. So if that's in the budget, I'd highly recommend that. Now, unfortunately, it is rather large. So we typically, if we're gonna put it in a bag, we'll carry a second 13 inch bag just for this guy, because it is quite big, or you can put it like say in a Pelican or something like that. But this is the basic setup. Now, of course, in addition to that, we have uh, our batteries and our pocket wizard cables to actually attach the pocket wizards 
to the flashes and so forth. But that's really it for the lighting setup. When it comes to a wedding, most everything is going to be the same. We're going to use the same setup. The only difference is we're carrying a little bit of additional backup. So we might have another uh, off-camera strobe, say three or four, just in case one of these goes bad or one of our cables goes bad. We have an extra pocket wizard as well in case a pocket wizard breaks and so forth. So we have spares. In addition to that, the only difference is that we now have our on-camera flash and modifier. So we're using the 580EX with the Canon, and uh, we have the, uh, it's one of the light domes basically, okay? so. That's basically the difference when it comes to that. Okay, so that's it for all the lighting gear we take on our shoots. I'm gonna briefly show you the one bag just so you guys can check it out. Again, if you want more info, we're gonna have a video on this and kind of, it'll demonstrate and show it off and everything. But inside of the one bag, we have this nice little, uh, it's kind of like a slip case basically where you can essentially modify the spacers inside of it. So it's a Velcro modification system. You can move the space around for lenses, for lighting, for whatever you wanna use. Now, the cool thing about this is we also designed this to have this uh, little internal case that pulls out. So you can keep your lenses or your lighting inside of this case and you can use this just as a regular laptop bag or a regular book bag. We designed this system simply because we needed something that was a little bit more elegant, something that we could actually take to these events that wouldn't look kind of so unprofessional, like say a backpack or something like that. It looks like we're going out hiking with our camera gear. We wanted to look fairly designer because we're going to fairly high-end weddings. And so we designed this bag to be a, a very nice looking bag that has a removable cover system. So this is the, the gray cover that we have on here. I think it's called City Gray. We have black leather. We have all these different covers that you can kind of mix and match to whatever event or whatever style you might personally have. So that's that. You guys can check that out at undefined.com as well or at srlounge.com inside of the store. All right, so that's it for our lighting gear. I hope you all enjoy this video and I'll see you in the next one.